Okay, on this problem we have a mass of 2 kilograms and it's 4.2 meters above the tip of the relaxed spring. And the spring has a constant of 800 newtons per meter, so very stiff. And I want to find the maximum compression of the spring relative to its equilibrium length. And so I'm going to put in a dotted line here just a reference to how long the spring was in the initial state and what we're trying to find is this compression distance and I'll call that X okay so I guess the most common mistake here would be to look at the potential energy gravitational for the 2 kilogram mass and say that it was mgy where y is equal to 4.2 and then say all of that energy gets turned into the compression of, of the spring one half kx squared. What you're ignoring if you do that is that the block goes farther than 4.2 meters downward. It goes 4.2 meters plus an additional x, and that x is unknown. So that's what complicates the problem mathematically. Now you're free to put the zero for potential energy or for the y coordinate anywhere you want. You could put it here. You could also put it here. And I think putting it in the lowest spot is actually a little bit simpler for this problem. So I'm going to do y equals 0 right here, which means this height right here is y equals x. And it means this height right here is y equals 4.2 plus x. So then I get into my energy conservation equation E initial equals E final and there's all kinds of great stuff going on between the beginning of this problem and the end um, this thing is in free fall it's speeding up it hits the spring the spring only exerts tiny forces at the beginning so the, so the mass is still accelerating downward and then the spring force increases and increases slowing this thing down and eventually stopping it and all of that interesting stuff in between we can just totally ignore because energy methods always just address before and after. So I just look at the initial state, and I notice that V is equal to zero, and in the final state, V is equal to zero. There's no kinetic energy in the analysis at all. So in the initial state, I have only my potential energy for the, for the two kilogram mass being lifted above Y equals zero. There's no motional energy. There's no energy stored in the spring. In my final state, the block is sitting at a height of y equals 0. So the potential energy is 0. Um, that was my motivation for putting the 0 right there. And all I have is energy stored in the spring. So that's going to be a 1 half k x squared. And then things get a little bit messed up mathematically. When I plug in what y initial actu actually is, we don't know what it is because it depends on how far the spring compresses. So there's an x term in there. And then I realize, oh, I'm stuck with a quadratic equation. So I'm going to plug in the numbers and organize it, and then I'm just going to use technology to, to solve the quadratic equation. So my mass is 2 kilograms. My spring constant was 800, so half of that's 400. And I would prefer A to be a positive number, so I'm going to move everything to the right side. 400x squared, and then I have an x term. Oh, that's 19. So 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 x. When I subtract that, I get negative 19.6 x. And then I have 19.6 times 4.2. It's my constant term there, but I have to subtract it to get it over to the right-hand side. So I get 82.32 equals 0. Now, you're welcome to do the quadratic formula by hand. Um, but the way we're operating this semester, technology is a totally acceptable way of dealing with it. So. 
I'm going to use Maxima for this. It's a computer algebra system that I use in my calculus classes all the time. Um, trying to type this all with one hand because there's too much stuff on my desk. Okay, so I got my equation in there, and I have to tell Maxima to get a decimal approximation for the solution to the equation. So float means give me a decimal approximation, and then I'm going to do solve that equation equals zero for x. And I get a positive answer of 0.479 out of this, and the negative answer I don't care about. Oh, I'd rather write it this way. 